just a bloke in a bar. Welcome to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith on SEN. Smithy, I have a confession, mate. I have a confession. I'm feeling a bit down. Right. And you know what it is, mate? You know what it is? What is it? I miss you, mate. I just miss you. I just want to be near you. I want to. I want to be in your presence, mate. I want to be in your presence. How you been, buddy? Oh, I've been alright, mate. I've, I'm going alright. I, I miss you too, Campy. I, mate, we, haven't, we haven't seen each other face to face for what four weeks now, mate. What is Adam Stuck doing? Stuck in COVID lockdown in Sydney, and I don't know. I'm, <laughs> it's been I'm, a tough time. I'm doing my best. We're, we're still face masks up here, and yeah, we're very fortunate. We. Um, we're getting around fairly sort of normally, but um, hopefully, fingers crossed, you guys can can get out soon. Thinking of Mate. everyone, obviously, down in New South Wales and Victoria and, and now South Australia, actually, so not good. Mate, uh, you want to hear a funny face mask yarn? Yeah, so go the on. Missus, the missus went online. She bought me a large face mask. <laughs> face mask. Yes. And let's just say I'm, I've got a challenging beak, to say the least. <laughs> And it costs 150 bucks. The top tier, top tier face mask. 150 dollars for a face Look, mask. Top tier, top tier. Anyway, so wow. I put on. Didn't fit the beak, and also they don't make extra larges. <laughs> so I got a 150 dollar face mask. That's not going to do anything for me. Mate, you're you're getting wait, you're getting paid too much coin. Fair income, mate. Honestly, 150, that's... spending 150 dollars on a face mask. They give them away. Mate, look, I'm trying to look. It's all for you, mate. I'm trying to be in the best mental state possible for the for the captain. Oh, I appreciate. Right? It. I appreciate it. I appreciate. <laughs> it. Now, speaking of uh, huge deals and a lot of cash, mm. uh, Payne Hass. The word is ten year deal. Now, let's just put it all on the table. Yep. Payne Hass is incredible. Yes, you could argue once in a generation talent, but. 10-year deal is quite dramatic. What are your thoughts on 10-year deals? Oh, look, I, I, I can understand why the Broncos are looking at that. He is has been phenomenal for them um, since he, he came into first grade and, and has continued to play that way. And, and they haven't been in the best of form over the last two seasons, picking up the wooden spoon last year, sitting sort of down the bottom again. But every time you watch the Broncos play, he's just a standout, isn't he? Absolutely. A standout. So I can understand... Uh, why the Broncos are thinking that just so there's absolutely no opportunity for a rival club to come and poach him um, mm. which is what you know it's been happening a little bit to the Broncos over the last uh, two seasons but it's risky it, it, it's ri- uh, 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 all the risk is on the club so mm. if they're willing to offer the the 10 year deal at a million dollars a year for a player that that's a no brainer for me I, I don't know what you think but if you're guaranteed ten million dollars for ten years, I, I'm just uh, where do I sign? Oh, absolutely. I, I think you, look, you could argue you could risk it and say you know maybe Payne Hass is going to be worth one point two, one point three. But I, I'm with you in the sense that from a security perspective and, and mm. Payne Hass, you go on. You know what? Ten mil in the bank, guaranteed. Yeah, let's lock her in. Yeah. Well, when you look at you know the highest paid players in the game, like we're talking what one one point two, one point three million maybe. So you know, as as a, if you, if you're paying Haas and you're thinking, well, you know, in in two years' time or three years' time, when I'm going to be sort of at my peak, am I going to be worth 1.3 million? Probably, but mm. at the back end of my career, am I am I going to be <laughs> worth 1.3 million dollars? Probably not. Very so true. you Very spread true. it out across the the ten years, at a million a year, wow, like that's a that's a huge opportunity for a young man. Uh, right there, and and it's a similar situation to Jason Taumalolo, mm. where the Cowboys offered him ten year deal for ten million. He took that smart move by the player. It's guaranteed money. It's security for a long, long time. Absolutely, I guess from a a Broncos ex player and a fan, even the only issue I have is that we're making ten year decisions in circumstances that we've got to believe we're not going to be in these circumstances in five years' time. Do you know what I mean? We've got to be yeah. confident enough to believe that in five years' time we're going to be so going so well that Payne has wants to stay for unders even. Yeah, no, I, I do see that point. But I guess they're, they're looking from uh, you know, the point of view of Payne Haas being a player that they build a team around. Mm. And, you know, in five or six years when he's, you know, played some of his best football and sort of entering the... The final stage of his career, he's he's a guy that can nurture and bring the young players through. The type of player that they're lacking right now, mm. the Brisbane Broncos. It, it's been said by many people and many, you know, judges of of rugby league to say what the Broncos are lacking over the past couple of years is 
the older heads, the experienced players, the guys that have been there for in the game for you know eight to ten years, locking Payne Haas away on a long term contract, he then turns into he transforms into that older player that's been at the club. He knows the organisation. He knows what it's about. He knows what winning is about, and he can help nurture those new guys through in five and six years time. So do you feel that even though the best clubs haven't done this, you feel that the Broncos are in a position where they kind of have to do it? You know what I mean? Because no Roosters wouldn't... I mean, they have never been in this position, the Roosters or the Storm. Mm. And, but yet we've never really seen them have to throw out a 10-year contract. What are your thoughts yeah. on the fact that a good club or the best clubs haven't done this before? Yeah, no, well, it's, it's sort of... Uh, it, <laughs> it creates the argument of, is it needed uh, a long, mm. long-term contract like this? Um, but I guess... What you said there probably proves the point that the, they, these clubs that you mentioned, the Roosters and the Storm, they, they haven't found themselves in that position. Although, sorry, the Roosters, not so long ago, they, they picked up the wooden spoon. Second um, last, 2016. Sorry, came second yeah, last. second yeah. last. So, um, But they, I think there was probably different things going on there. They certainly had a, a great football side and that season just didn't, things just didn't happen for them. But mm. the Broncos are in a position now where they're, they're pretty much sort of you know rock bottom where they're trying to build, uh, rebuild a club. And I guess they, they've looked at Payne Haas as a guy that they can build uh, a club around. He's a franchise player. Um, and, and yeah, they put a lot of faith in him. And as I mentioned, the, the risk being on the club, what if Payne Haas was to you know, suffer a, a long-term injury or if he's to suffer an injury even for one season, Kempi? Yep. You know, he has a season-ending ending injury, picks up a, an injury, and, you know, um, touch wood, he does, this doesn't happen because Payne Haas is a wonderful player. We want him playing as much as he can. But if he's to suffer a, a, a long-term injury, well, there's a, there's a million-dollar player sitting on the sideline, a leader wow. of your club that's just that's not producing anything for you football-wise. Absolutely. That's now where the risk lies. Now, let's move a little bit to the left. Tavita Pangai Jr. has been linked to the Bulldogs. It hasn't been confirmed, but all the mail coming in suggests that he will be at the Bulldogs next year. Do you think that's a good pickup for the Doggies? Well, again, the, the Dogs are in, in search of, um, you know, players that have been in the game now for a little bit and, and know they can play some good football. I, I, I'm not too sure whether Tavita is the right player for them. Um, I, I can't believe Dale Finucane's name hasn't come up. It's, it shocks me. In, in shocks discussions me. around the Bulldogs, considering that's where he started his career. Mm. So he's a guy that, that knows what the Bulldogs are about, and, and, and I think that's what they're trying to rebuild, certainly with the move of uh, employing uh, Phil Gould back there, who, um, who um, has a long history with the Bulldogs. Mm. That points out to me that they're, they're trying to bring back people that understand the Bulldogs as an organisation and the culture there and, and what made you know, the, the great Bulldog sides you know, so good. Um, so that that's really surprising. Is Tavita Pangai Jr. the right player to go there? I'm not too sure, but um, it, it's hard to make that that judgment when you're not involved in that organisation. If if Trent Barrett and and in particular Phil Gould uh, behind the recruitment of Tavita Pangai Jr., then if those guys feel that he's the right person, then he certainly is the right person. Yeah, it's it's so hard to see, you know, the inner workings of the plans have got in place, and and also the Gus Gould factor is a big, big factor. How how much do you think that? Let's say you're a betting man, Smithy. Yep. And you were to bet, how much do you think this is actually going to improve the doggies' chances of making the top eight in the next few years? Oh, let's huge. say three years. Huge, mate. Huge improves their chances out of sight. You you you've seen what Gus Gould. Did with the Penrith Panthers, like have a look at the force they are now. And I know he went down there, and it, it was well documented about the five-year plan that the Panthers had, and it, it took a little bit longer than that. But they're reaping the rewards now of, mm. of the time and the work that was and the effort that was put into building, uh, you know, all of their their junior talent up in that region, and mm. putting them together, identifying the talent, you know, thinking what was going to formulate, you know, bringing all those players together, formulate a, a, a successful football side. And we're seeing that now. Like a third of their side were rewarded with, you know, representative honours this year. 
So it shows the work that, um, you know, Gus, he's a very, very smart rugby league man. We all know that. He's very knowledgeable about the game, been around it for a long time. So he he, know, he knows what it takes to build a success, uh, su- successful organisation. And you got to remember, Trent Barrett was there too. So he, he played a huge part in developing the style of football that the Penrith Panthers play right now with their attack. Absolutely. So it's a good mixture of those two people. Um, you know, Trent Barrett, been around for, uh, for a long time, played at the highest level for New South Wales and, and played for Australia. Um, and, and looking, did you see the the possible lineup for the Bulldogs next year? Have you got that in front of you? Mate, for I our do, listeners? but we will talk about the possible lineup for the Bulldogs next year after the break. After Don't the forget break. to... Don't forget to send us a text anytime, 0457 736 736. This is a captain's run with Cameron Smith, but Best Sheds, Best Sheds are up to 40% cheaper. Back shortly on SEN. Welcome back to the captain's run with Cameron Smith. Live on SEN, we've got some a lot of great texts coming through, Smithy. How do you reckon Tigers will go at the back end of the year? What is Adam doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got uh, the goat and little sheep Smithy. Ah, oh, yeah, there's one of the boys. There's little one sheep. of the boys. <laughs> hey, guys, just just wondering what your thoughts are <laughs> if Anthony Milford were to switch to Union, a possible fullback. Thoughts on that, Smithy? Wow. Um, oh, look, oh, I think going off a lot of the leagueies that have gone over to play Union, um, they've all done considerably well. Um, particularly, the, well, there's no forwards that go over. It's all backs, but um, I think you'll be okay. Like, it's you've got a bit more mm. space, I, I reckon, a bit more time as a fullback in Union. And I don't know. I, I'd love to see him stay in league, though, don't we? We don't Mate. want him to oh, be Union. Absolutely. Get him get him at the Roosters, the Storm, coming off the bench, 14, get some confidence back. Keep Vintage him in Union. Milford. Keep him in Union. Ah, uh, sorry, keep him in league. <laughs> keep him in league. <laughs> um, now, we have one really good question that I saw before, uh, and I can't. Okay, hey lads, do you think? Yeah, there we go. Hey lads, do you think Papenhuyzen should slot back into the number one role straight away, or should he have to work his way back into the squad? Considering Nico has been doing so well, really good question. And I think uh, Ryan Papenhuyzen is he's named this week to play off the bench, and it's not it, that doesn't surprise me. I think um, that's probably a, a smart decision by both Craig Bellamy and Ryan to to start mm-hmm. off the bench um, for for a couple of reasons. He hasn't played for a long time. Um, he's coming back from a pretty long uh, layoff. I think it was maybe eight weeks, close to that anyway. Um, and, of course, the form of, of Nico Hines, who has just been outstanding for the Storm. Um, he's, he's one of the form players of the competition at the moment. Um, and, and a big reason why the Storm have gone on just such a huge uh, winning run. I do feel, though, that... Um, Maybe in in a week's time or even two weeks' time, Pappenhausen will have the number one jersey once again. You know, let's not forget about the way he started the year. Absolutely, because he was in very good form, um, good enough form that there was some people talking about him playing State of Origin as well. So let's not forget about the form he had before um, his head knock and the time that he spent away. But it's a huge dilemma, Kempi, because you got to remember. Harry Grant isn't back either as yet. Yep. Um, so we've got Nico Hines in outstanding form at fullback. Ryan Pappenhausen returns. Brandon Smith in outstanding form playing in the number nine jersey. And then Harry Grant yet to return from injury. So there's some really good headaches for Craig Bellamy uh, and, and the coaching staff at the Melbourne Storm. But unfortunately, you can't fit... I feel I I don't feel you can fit all four players in that side at the same time unless you take out <laughs> another player at the moment. But like, who can you take out? Like they're they're in such great form as a team. They're playing so well. Like there's there's no one really you can you can move around. Oh, it's absolutely incredible. It is incredible to think that a Clive Churchill winner, a guy that essentially had New South Wales fourteen role locked down at yep. the start of this year, is going to have to battle his way back in and then that doesn't even include Harry Grant who is essentially touted as the next generation's hooker that is also going to have to battle his way back in just to get a start even not even like he's they'll be lucky to be on the bench and then even mm. fight to get a start it's absolutely incredible yeah and, and mate that's what I was saying like it's just it's 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 a really nice headache to have as a coach to have so many you know wonderful players at your disposal that they could possibly not even make your 17 
um, where they 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 at other clubs they'd be in your starting thirteen. Mm. So it's a great position for Craig Bellamy with that selection um, headache. But if, if if there's one change to be made, and and Nico Hines has to be in in the football side, it's obviously in the outside back somewhere. Mm. Um, I don't know if you've heard any news with any of the outside backs at the Storm, but you know. Again, who do you take out? Like They're playing so well, and the combinations that they've built, both on the left and the right-hand side of that field, it's just a really difficult situation at the moment. Absolutely. We've just got a text in, actually. What are your thoughts on the potential Bulldogs side? Now, we were going to speak about this after the break. It's yes. come to me now. It's been texted to me. Yes. This is the potential <laughs> side for the Doggies next season. Matt Dufty, Addo Carr, Naden, Kotrick, Katoa, Burton, Avarillo, Thompson, Marshall King, Paul Vaughan, if they sign him, mm. uh, but Fatala Mariner, yep. Pangai Jr., and Josh Jackson. That is a side that could genuinely challenge the eight, in my opinion. Yeah, thought, Smithy? mate, it, I agree. It's a, it's a strong lineup. And you know, you're adding the attacking potency of, of a Dufty, um, Addo Carr, you know, Brent Naden, like they're, they're wonderful. Matt Burton, like he, wow. he, he would do some wonders for that uh, footy side. And if you can land Paul Vaughan and Tavita Pangai Jr., then that gives you a little bit of starch up front as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a much uh, more balanced footy side than what we've seen from the Bulldogs um, at present. But um, that, they're a side that could play finals. There's no doubt about that. Under the guidance, as we spoke about before the break, um, you know, from uh, Trent Barrett and, and and the great Gus Gould, but that's a, that that's a pretty you know pretty good looking footy side. That absolutely, absolutely. Now, and also on still on the doggies. Mm. What were your thoughts on the great Lachlan Lewis's uh, <laughs> poor decision making? Let's just say poor decision making. Thoughts on that, Smith? <laughs> well, oh, mate, I, I just didn't know what to make of it, and then uh, <laughs> I actually didn't know what. What happened, and I spoke on, on Vossi's show on Monday, and I thought, well, obviously, there might have been just a bit of an in-house joke going on, and, um, you know, the halftime siren had gone. So, you know, Lachlan Lewis may have thought, oh, if something happens here, a little sort of scuffle or whatever, and a bit of, bit of a melee, yep. nothing can come of it. But he got he got put in the bin for 10 when they were in a, a really strong position. Wow. In the game and the scoreboard. But... Um, uh, has it come out? Has it come out that Walker said to him, "Mate, go back to reserve grade." Well, that's been denied it, by most of the Rabbitohs players. He didn't, he didn't say that. He just said okay. he must have said something else, but he didn't say that. But he must, I, I think he, he might have just said, "Mate, uh, you, you've got bad hair." Yeah, uh, that would do it. Though. <laughs> I'll tell you what, <laughs> for Lockie, if mate, that because he's got some good hair. You don't got a man's hair, <laughs> especially when it's that good. Oh. Uh, but what, what's look, your thoughts on a sled? Like, if he if he said to him. If he said to if he turned around to Lachlan Lewis, he said, "Mate, go back to reserve grade." Where, like, what are your thoughts on that? I'm uh, okay. I heard that every game I ever played <laughs> in reserve grade too. In reserve grade, I was like, they wanted me to go back to reserve grade or reserve grade. <laughs> um, oh man, no, that's funny. Look, that's I, I just I just think that uh, reg- doesn't matter what he says. Your teammates come first. You've ground yeah. out a, a victory. Like, you're winning at halftime. Yes. You've been struggling under the pump all season. You and your brothers have literally been put under the spotlight and and embarrassed by the media and people, fans and comment sections, all that. And you finally got the top three side on the ropes and you do that. Oh, mate, crazy. It was a golden opportunity for him. But, I, I, mate, I'll tell you what, the, the text messages, they're flying in today. And there's one here for you. Hey, Kempi and Smithy. With Kempi being a Broncos diehard, mm. right, do you think Ben Eichen's recruitment will have an effect on the Broncos potentially making finals for 2022? I mean, they've got the squad now to make finals. You know, I think if you took that same squad, put it in a good cultured club, uh, you would get them to around the eight uh, position, around the six to eight position. I believe Ben Eichen's role as recruitment will be good. But it's more mm. the presence and the standards that he's going to bring. It's the putting everyone on notice, saying, we've brought a big dog in. Mm. He is going to make some huge calls. You either get on board or you get out. And when you send that message to a lot, a lot of young boys, it makes them go, hang on a sec, we need to really pull our socks up here because if we don't, we're going to be moved on. They've already shown that they've moved on. Matt Lodge and Tavita Pango Jr., who are actually their best performers this year yes so so the message sent to everyone is we, we don't care how good you're playing if you don't fit what we want we're going to move you on now 
the, the issue is is that it doesn't change the fact that we have no senior players that have been there for a few years. So it's still going to take time to build that up. Now, Adam Reynolds mm. is going to be the leader of that, and yes. he's going to make a huge difference. Kurt Catewell, also a huge difference. But I think we still need to have one more recruit in a key position to challenge for the, the five to eight mark. What are your yep. thoughts, Smithy? Yeah, no, I agree. And we go back to the point we made several weeks ago now about the, the low ball offer to, to Nico Hines. Oh, my God. Of the 300,000. And Bronx are probably looking at that now going, wow. Wow, like we've missed out on a genuine superstar with what he's producing. Imagine imagine him pulling on a Broncos jersey next year and, and playing the style of footy and, and the level of football that he's playing right now for the Melbourne Storm. Absolutely unbelievable. Imagine us lining up with Reynolds, Capewell and Hines, how different of a side we are. So, yeah, devastating that we lost him. But after the break, we'll be talking more footy as usual. Make sure to text us on 0457 736 736. This is the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. The best sheds, best sheds are up to 40% cheaper. Back shortly on SEN. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith live on SEN. We have the texts are flying in. Mm. Are the Eels a serious contender this year or just pretenders? Thoughts, Smithy? Well, I think they're, they're, they've got to be serious contenders, don't they? I just feel, though, if they're not at their best, I, I don't think they're going to compete with you know, the likes of Storm, Penrith, and even the Rabbitohs. Um, yeah, they're, they're just a side that if they turn up and they're not on their A game, then they're going to struggle. Hey, boys, Gemma here. What do you think of the penalty try in the Canberra game? In my opinion, it was one of the worst calls I've ever seen. Did you see that, Smithy? Uh, I missed that one, but like we've had some couple of like dodgy ones Barry of Crockers. late, haven't we? Mate, absolute Barry Crocker. So basically... They scored and he grazed his chin as he scored. It wasn't even, it was a, it literally grazed his chin. Um, and it was an eight point try. Uh, Cameron, do you think Hines can be number seven at Sharks next year? Rod from Nowra. Rod, uh, mate, I, I, think he, I think he could play seven. There's no doubt about that. And in, remember, he gets an entire off season, uh, sorry, pre season um, to get, get himself ready. I just feel he's a little bit. He, he might be a little bit sort of bogged down when he's playing as a seven. I think he likes being maybe a little bit wider of the ruck and a bit, a bit more sort of space to move. And you've seen, yeah, this year how silky his hands have been, and that's that's one area that he's really improved over the last couple of years is his passing ability and the ability to hit, yeah, you know, the winger on a, on a long pass. So could he play seven? Yes, he could, but I think he'd be much much. Um, better in a, in a six or one jersey. Yeah, I, I think he's much better in a six or one jersey. Now, speaking of uh, sevens, the great Mitchell Moses has revealed that he had a fractured back in the first ten minutes of his Origin debut. He's out for an indefinite time. What are your thoughts? Obviously, this affects the Eels season, but how dramatically mm. does, is it just plug and play? When he comes back, it's going to be all good, or they'll take time to build the combinations again. What are your thoughts? Oh, you? mate, oh, this is a big one. Like th- this is. His- for, for Parramatta, this is as big an injury or an impact to their footy side as Cleary is to Penrith. You know, a, a lot of the football that Parramatta play is based around um, Mitch and, and particularly his kicking game. you got to remember, he's the goal kicker as well. So it's it's a pretty vital role that he plays at that footy side. He, he doesn't just wear the number seven jersey. He leads them around the park. He's a very dominant football player in in that side. I just can't believe the injury that he picked up and, and played the majority of that origin with, with a fractured back. Like, it's just crazy. Like, it just it shows the, first of all, the toughness that he has to, to play that match out. Um, you know, he had to be in pain, surely. Oh, surely. And, and, and to think that it's in your debut, on your debut, and the person that really picked New South Wales up and led them in that last 20 for that late charge, it was Mitchell Moses. Mm. So... It hats off to him to have the mental fortitude to stay focused while in so much pain. It's very easy to get off your game when you're focused on your Gary Jack Hurt. What's your What's the worst injury you ever played with, Kempi? Did you ever anything like Mate, that? Back well, fracture. Te- look, technically, I go off as soon as I feel any negative feelings. <laughs> um, but mental or argue, physical? Mental or physical? I have played with a broken heart, so I, I believe that. And a broken heart can kill you, Smithy. A broken heart can kill you, mate. It can kill you. Um, what about yeah, you, mate? What was, the, what was the worst injury you played on with? Oh, no, I think I stubbed my big toe <laughs> back in 2000 and 
five or something like that, and I played through that. But um, no, I, mate, I was very fortunate, eh? Like to 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 play the amount of games I played, and in in the middle in the field and, and the position I played, and I, I was very lucky. I had some bumps and bruises, like every league player has. Yeah, and every league player plays through um, every pretty much every game of their career. Um, yeah, but I, I was very very fortunate, mate, not to pick up anything serious. Yeah, in all seriousness, the, the hardest ones I played through is uh, on my debut, I dislocated my shoulder uh, oh. once or twice. Uh, then the, later in my, well, not later in my career, a couple of years later, I broke six ribs and my lung collapsed, and I played about 15 minutes with that. Oh, um, how did that happen? So I was, like, getting a quick play the ball, finding my front, and someone flew in for the tackle and missed me, but their knees hit, hit me in the oh. perfect sweet spot into my ribs. Uh, and that was painful. It was crazy because I went to the hospital yeah. and was I was so fit and healthy that the hospital nurses kept rushing back in because my heart resting heart rate was so low it would send the 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 alarms off. off. Yeah, yes. And so it was just after <laughs> crazy. It was, after, it was round one, so I was it was in good good nick. Anyway, so we we got the scans and they said, oh yeah, you've got a couple of um, just some crack ribs. All good. Anyway, so yeah. I went home, went to bed, woke up the next morning, and they're like, look, just go get some extra scans to make sure you haven't you know hit anything inside or whatever mm. so I'm on the way to get extra scans and I'm laughing with my ex misses and when we talk exes <laughs> I'm talking a thousand exes ago a thousand exes ago <laughs> okay and anyway so I'm laughing and I'm getting like short of breath and I'm like that's weird go in get the scans sit down waiting for the results the doctor comes running out and goes you need to get to a hospital right now your lung has collapsed and so I had to go up to the hospital wow put the tube in me and reinflate me lung and they said if you weren't fit and healthy you would have died in your sleep no way yes yes um so that was probably the that was that really affected me that injury because i kept rushing back and so i tried to come back three weeks later against the knights and every time i ran the ball they kept saying get his ribs get his ribs (laughs) um and so in the 70th minute the 70th minute i got an inside ball off Lockie. oh no and i think it's a stimson the big front rower yeah Uh, simpson Simpson back row. Uh, yeah, he got me. He got me real good. He got oh. me real good. Uh, and then um, basically, lung, it was just lung stayed into... inflated though. Lung stayed inflated this time, which shows you it's a, it's a good strong lung. Yep. It's Steve, a good strong Steve lung. Steve Simpson. Steve Simpson. Yes, big mm. big man, very big man. Um, anyway, so wow. that, that was the yeah. It was it was tough times, tough times. That's, oh, that's sure. a fair now, effort. I wanted to speak to you about some some in depth footy kind of chat. Yes. So I've done some more deep diving, like the post contact meters, mm-hmm. and I've actually found out that the but it, it, it maps on to whoever has the most outside backs in the top 50 for metres made, yes. it maps directly on to the, the, the table. So the top right. five teams are Storm, Panthers, Eels, Manly, Roosters. Mm-hmm. Now, with the forwards, though, the top five teams aren't the top five teams uh, when it comes to metres made. The Storm, uh, so the Storm and the Panthers are actually second last, and so it's interesting to see the game has changed over the last few years, where it's your outside backs that need to be your meter readers. Is that something that you spoke about at the Storm? Yeah, well, mate, I remember talking, well, not just me, but the te- like team discussions and team meetings over the last couple of years, and the way that the game was changing, and the emphasis on outside backs. Now we talk about you know the back three, which is the two wingers and the fullback. But, but you can include the centres. So the back five um, and their work uh, their work rate as far as metres gained in, in every match. Now, we, we put a huge emphasis on our boys to get back to behind the ball early, make some early metres for us to take the pressure off the forwards because they're doing a lot of work. But conversely, like when we're defending, if we could minimise the amount of metres that the opposition made as far as their back fires were, were concerned, it would go a long, long way to us winning the match. And as you said, mate, the stats you've looked at, it's backed it up. Mate, that's really interesting that the best team has, has identified that. Now, don't forget to join the conversation, 0457 736 736. This is a captain's run with Cameron Smith for Best Sheds. Best Sheds are up to 40% cheaper. When we come back, we catch up with the great Tristan from Top Sport for the latest odds on Origin... Well, not on Origin 3, not on Origin 3, on the Olympics. Live on a scene. Welcome to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. We have the great Tristan joining us from Top Sport with the latest Tristo. odds. Tristan, mate, you've broken my heart. You went out and you met Smithy before you met me. I'm devastated, mate. I'm absolutely devastated. 
Well, I was uh, yeah. I, I went and saw Smithy on on Wednesday at Origin. It was great to meet him, mm. and I would have loved to have uh, had a beer with you, Kempi, But you've locked yourself down south, which is uh, makes it very difficult for all of your, <laughs> your fans to come and see you. But uh, but it was uh, it was a good night out there. And how good is it to be talking to you guys after a victory in Game Three too? It was uh, much better than the uh, first couple of performances, and the the boys really did us did us proud. Finally. Finally, we've got a victory. Well, we got a victory on the scoreboard. For We're yet to get a victory in our punting, though. We're going awful. No, no. <laughs> but we, we might have a tip first later on in the in the show, boys. Um, uh, and, and, and the good part is, Smithy, the, the tip I'm going to give out, the uh, the horse, that if you flip the numbers around like your mate did last time, <laughs> it's around about that $26 mark, too. So, <laughs> so history may repeat. But we'll... Uh, We'll get to that. We'll get to that shortly. But uh, we've got Olympics to talk about today. It's uh, geez, it started. The, uh, the the softball girls didn't quite uh, get us off on the right foot. They got beaten mm. in uh, the, well, the mercy rule came into a pl- into a play, unfortunately. Oh, but we've got plenty oh, of markets up. Uh, yes, yes, which made resulting the first Olympic event for top sport a bit of a hassle because we didn't quite have the rules in place to sort that out at the time. <laughs> but we've got through it all, and yep. we're here. But now uh, the the big markets we got up for the Olympics. We got the gold medals over and under. Aussies, 13 and a half gold. There's been a big push where the uh, the punters took the over 12 and a half. It's at the 13 and a half now. And if you think the wow. Aussies can win more than 14 or more gold medals, it's two dollars oh five. So lots of support, lots of positivity because uh, it's, it's a decent number. You do scroll down to a few of the other nations though, like our USA. The line's 43 and a half, and uh, Japan is 26 and a half, and China is 36 and a half. So obviously some big numbers there, but I, I think we'd all be happy if the Aussies could walk away with 14 or more. Yeah, surely. Like We're, we're going to clean up in the pool, aren't we? Oh, definitely. Like how many, pool, how many, we've got a lot of... Yeah, um, how, many goals, how many goals would we aim for in the pool? Yeah, I reckon they'd be, they'd be looking, you know, that six to eight mark in the pool, I'd sort of suggest. And if we can get that, then it puts us in good stead. And we've got a lot of um, a lot of new events as well. Like one of the new, new markets or the new events that's in the Olympics this year is the surfing. So... Mm. Uh, obviously, the Aussies have always been very strong there. The Ira Kanjis, I'm led to believe, is their name. And uh, the Aussies to win the gold, they're $2.30. I don't know if that's a G up. One of the boys mentioned it to me, so I hope he's, he's giving me the right drum. But $2.30, <laughs> yeah. the girls to win the uh, win, win the gold medal there. And the men are uh, $7.50. So yep. a few of these new events coming into play are what give us an opportunity to get a few golds, I think. And remembering, too, the, the, the women's rugby seven seven team, they, they took out the inaugural um, gold medal last time around yes, so we're hoping yeah. that the girls can bring another gold back again and also the, the Matildas they kick off yes, tonight the against uh, the football ferns yeah the football ferns exactly right the Matildas and they're very short to get a result against their big rivals $1.29 Australia $4.80 the draw and $12 these markets are always paid after 90 minutes in injury time so Hopefully the Aussies, uh, the Matildas get us, get, get off to a good start there because they're a genuine threat to, to win a medal as well. So there's plenty of excitement. It's going to be a big, big couple of weeks and I'm sure we'll chat about it next week. So looking forward to getting started tonight. And um, as promised, just a little tip for anyone out there that likes a little wager Here on Here we race. go. Go to Eagle Farm. Yes. Race two, number one, scathing. It's been ten dollars into eight fifty. A little each way bet. Top of the uh, top of the weights. I think it'll be very hard to beat. It's been working into a little bit of form. So eight dollars fifty there. And as I said, if you flip the numbers around, race one, number two, it's around about that twenty six dollar mark. So it might uh, might 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 be a little uh, pay pay to do a little saver there too. I'm getting Mate. on both. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, Tristan. And uh, hopefully lockdown ends and I can have a few Mick Devere's with you soon. <laughs> Would love that. Good on you, See Tristo. You Whether it's same-game multi or head-to-head betting, Top Sport gives you top dollar for everything AFL. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858. Now, we have some texts coming in, guys. They're actually flying in. We can't keep up with them. Hi, Kempi and Cameron. We'll be interested to know if the stats equate to middle forwards making more average tackle attempts, attempts giving the game much more favour of a, a fast play the ball. What are your thoughts on that, Smithy? Um, yeah, but we looked at that. Last time we spoke about the stats and and how the the tackle attempts or missed tackles didn't re- they didn't really match up did they? Yeah, no, I don't th- I don't think they did. It was the missed tackles didn't uh, equate to you know didn't map onto the ladder. Yeah. But missed tackles and post contact meters they actually did map on perfectly to the ladder, which was surprising. Right. Now we've got another text here with Reynolds, Sewer, Mago, and Coach Bennett leaving. Has the legitimate mm-hmm. premiership contender window for the Bunnies come to a close? Well, are we talking next year, are we? Yes. Oh, maybe, but 
you, know, you can never write off a good footy side, and, and they have got some changes, you know, fairly significant changes with with Reynolds, uh, Sewer, Mago, and obviously the coach, the great coach Wayne Bennett. Moving on. The great, the great Wayne Bender. Where do you think he'll end up next year, if you had to bet? Oh, man, I don't know. I, like, I, what team? What teams are there for him to go to at the moment? It's crazy. I think he'll go have a year off, and then he'll come back and he'll be the coach of the new Brisbane side, I reckon. You think, you think a year off and come back? He's nearly, oh. he's nearly 80. But he, can, but he can be, I mean, year off in the sense of head coaching, but he goes and, uh, he goes and helps direct football. You know what I mean? Like, he's yep. a, yeah. uh, what's yep. the word? Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, like like coaching director, football yeah, head of does football. Yeah, something like that. For, yes, yes, something like that. Sort of like um, a sort of like a, uh, a Gus Gould. Yeah, I think so. For a year, help, mm. puts things in place, systems in place for clubs that are struggling. Now, on to the round nineteen preview, Smithy. We've got the Eels versus the Raiders. What are your thoughts? Well, this is a good game. This, this is, I, I feel as though this is going to be a pretty good matchup, even though the Raiders just sitting out of the eight at the moment on four and against. Um, Eels going nicely, sitting in the fourth spot. But no Mitchell Moses. Huge out, as we mentioned just before. Mm. Uh, go- going off the back of last week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tip, tip an upset here. I, I think the Raiders may may jag a win against the Eels. I'm going the Eels. I reckon they'll get the win. Ooh. I think they won, with, they won without Mitch last week. I think they yep. can do it again. Fair enough. Um, now we have the Roosters versus the Knights. Oh, look, the, the Knights were very poor last week. Um, so I'm going to go the Roosters. I think the Roosters as well. Uh, the Cowboys versus Storm. Oh, I'm just, I'm just Storm. I'm leaving it at that. Honestly, yeah. Wow. They, they are truly, they, they've surely. If, I reckon if you averaged out the odds for the back end of the season, they'd have the surely they've got the shortest odds ever. You know, because they, are so, such a sure thing to win. Mm. Well, uh, what obviously, a, it's a game of footy. Yeah, but, well, they're a dollar five. Wow, they're a dollar five, and the cows are paying ten dollars up in Townsville. So, um, oh, some of the numbers getting around the storm at the moment, like they broke an eighty-six year record the other week for most points after seventeen matches. Beat the thirty-five, I think the nineteen thirty-five Roosters. Wow, like going back that far, it's just unbelievable. I how many wins are they going for in a row this week? I think nineteen home win- wins, but their home has been at different grounds. That's how good they are. It's not even a home. There's they been four different it. home grounds, and they still win. It's crazy, Absolutely. crazy. Uh, uh, South versus Warriors, uh, the Bunnies. Yeah, I think the Bunnies are going to get the job done. I, the Warriors have just—they haven't kicked on the way I thought they would this year. I, yep. I thought they showed so much, I guess, grit and determination last year when they've yep. been through and sacrificed so much. Mm. I thought they would kick on, but they haven't really. Yeah, but you got to remember, mate. It's 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 their second year away from home now. Um, yeah. It's it's a long, long time, and it and it does have an effect on you. Um, after, and they don't have quite a bit. And that that home advantage of flying to New Zealand, yes. that, that is a big advantage. Oh, I'm not huge, sure. yeah. huge! Playing in front of their home fans, particularly like in Auckland. I know they play elsewhere around the country, but up there at Mount Smart Stadium, and and a huge loss on the weekend too. Um, Torhu Harris uh, yes. with a ruptured ACL. Not great news Massive. for Torhu, former He's teammate of player. mine, but huge out for them. Yeah, Manly Tigers. Uh, I'm backing the Manly Seagulls there. Yeah, I think I think the Manly they got all the Travojevic brothers back. Uh, Tommy Travojevic, he is just absolutely incredible. I can't believe he continues to do the things he does. Mm. On a, it's not like every two, three games he has this out of the world game. It's yep. every single game essentially. Yeah, no, he he's fantastic and and being yeah, career best form, deservedly won the Wally Lewis Medal in the in the Origin series, and he'll he'll get it done again for the Eagles on the weekend. Panthers, Broncos. Uh, Penrith, I think. Jerome Luai named. Is that right? He's back yes. from injury? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the Penrith Panthers too strong. Broncos 13 plus. Uh, Dragons <laughs> versus Titans. <laughs> uh, Broncos. Uh, th- this one will be a close one. Um, seventh. Saints still in the eight. Oh, I'm, I'm going to go the Titans here. Home ground. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going Titans too. Doggy Sharks. Uh, Sharky's too strong. I'm going to go doggies for an upset. Oh, the doggies. Yeah, Excellent. they look good. That first half, they look good. Anyway, that's it. Episode 10, done and dusted. If you missed anything from the show, make sure to download the SEN app. Grab the podcast. This has been the captain's run for Best Sheds. Beat the price rise. Talk to Best Sheds today. BestSheds.com.au.